Prophecy of Vanessa Everett. We'd like to remind everyone that DJICC is standing on Psalm 91. We recommend that everyone follow the governmental orders to practice. Wash your hands. Only venture out when absolutely necessary. We are concerned about our elderly members, and although worship services have moved to a digital platform, we are determined to get the gospel to them via Zoom, Facebook, and email announcements. Although the church doors are closed temporarily, we invite you to support the ministry with your tithes and offering via text to give at 551-258-8547 or online at djicc.org. Click give. God bless and keep you safe and healthy. Good morning and welcome everyone to the Deliverance Jesus is Coming virtual worship service. Thank you to everyone tuning in this morning from Facebook or Zoom. Be sure to share this service with your friends and family. We have a really exciting program from our youth department. So go ahead and hit the share button on your Facebook page, send the Zoom link out to friends and be sure to leave your reactions and comments throughout the service. We'd love to hear from you and know where you're tuning in from. To kick off today's service in celebration of Black History Month, I wanna take a moment to share our scripture. Today, it's coming from 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 14 through 15. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and become convinced of, because you know those from whom you learned it and how from infancy you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. Please join me now to bow our heads in a word of prayer. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for waking us up this morning, for allowing us the opportunity to join with you in fellowship with other Christians and other family members and friends for today's service. Lord, we thank you for our youth department, all of our wonderful children and teenagers and young adults who come together every month on fourth Sunday to celebrate you and to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Father, I ask you right now to bless everyone with good health, peace of mind, and joy in their spirits. We thank you now for all these things. We thank you for our fellow parishioners. We thank you for our leaders. We thank you for overseer Vanessa Everett as she has guided us through this tumultual time with grace and wisdom and the knowledge of Christ. And all these things we pray, amen. From here, we're gonna get started with our service. We're gonna kick it over to Sister Amani to help welcome all of our guests from around the world, followed by a praise and worship melody from our young men, brothers Shane, Chris, Austin, and Zach. To our visitors, on behalf of our senior pastor, the youth and young adults, and the entire DJICC church family, we are so glad you took the time to worship with us today. Please take a moment and help us stay connected with you. And you can follow the link in the chat or visit our website, djicc.org, and complete the guest section. Thank you for being our guest. Jesus is my 
Wow, what an amazing rendition of Jesus is mine from those young men. Thank you for sharing that with us. And thank you to Imani for this morning's welcome. Next up in our program, we're going to have a poem from Sister Kennedy. She's an amazing young artist, followed by church announcements from Sister Brianna. Good morning, everyone. Um, today, I will be reading a poem called I Am. I am a sister, a daughter, a friend. I am a mentor, a leader, a guide. I am a visionary, a poet, a speaker. I am who God made me to be, and no one can take that away from me. In these trying times, I still know who I am. I am not great even though I'm Black. I'm great because I'm Black. I am Black I am strong, I am proud, and a force to be reckoned with. So all those who stand against me, beware, because I know who I am. Thank you. Thank you for worshiping with us. Join Jesus is Coming every Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. for worship service. Thank you for worshiping with us. Join Jesus is Coming every Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. for worship service on Zoom. ID number 973-375-8500. Monday through Friday, there's noonday prayer. And Wednesdays from 7.30 p.m., till 8.30 p.m. Join us for tele-Bible study. Both of these services can be reached on our teleconference line at 717-275-8941. Use passcode 893-9353. Need a mask? We've got you covered. Protect yourself and support the ministry at the same time. Purchase your Jesus is Coming face mask for $12 plus shipping and handling from our website. Bulk orders are welcome. For more information, special events, and additional ways to partner with us in ministry, please visit djicc.org. Good morning, everyone. I hope everyone is having a blessed Sunday. I'll be reading our announcements today. I will start off with our Deliverance Jesus is Coming Church Leadership Academy will be held on March 11th, 2021, Thursday at 7.30 p.m. by our overseer, Pastor Vanessa Everett, and the late Bishop James H. Everett II. Leadership's lessons learned from Bishop James Everett II, panel discussion is pa panelist, Bishop Caesar Cavanis from Jamaica, New York, Pastor Antoinette Patrick from Valdosta, Georgia. We have our Marantha Bible Institute founded by Ms. Minister Betty Burgess and Bishop James H. Everett II. We have our virtual spring semester 2021. There's five dynamic courses to choose from. It's a 17 week course starting from February 1st through May 24th. One hour long course online class meeting from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. and 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. Spring semester registration fee is waived if registered by January 25th. On March 28th, 2021 at 10 a.m., we'll be holding our youth and young adult worships experience. Who are you riding with? with Minister Wednesday, Terry Bryant. We will also be holding a youth and young adult worship experience with the Facebook Live at djicc.org with the preacher Bishop, I'm sorry, Pastor JJ Allen from Baltimore, Maryland. And this will be held April 25th, 2021 at 10 a.m. We have our outreach ministry. 
Are you looking to spread the gospel? Matthews 28 and 19 starts out saying, therefore go. Please join the DJICC Evangelism Outreach Ministry every fourth Saturday, 11 a.m. to 12 noon. See Sister Barbara Cummings for additional information. The world needs you. Every third Thursday, we hold our men's Bible study. And that is held through Zoom. We have our after school all stars program. It's a Zoom camp and you can enroll today. It's for grades three through eight. And you would just go on sites.google.com slash view slash A-S-A-S-N-J. And it's free and supplies are included. And we want to wish a very happy birthday to all of our Febu February all celebrants our from and Overseer, Vanessa, the Youth Young Adults, and the DJICC family. Follow us at djicc.org. We will be wishing a happy wedding anniversary to all of our February lovebirds as well on behalf of Overseer Vanessa the youth and young adults, and the entire DJ ICC family. May your family, may your love continue to grow. If your family is growing as well, that is a blessing as well. Remember to keep our overseer, Vanessa Everett, our senior pastor, our DJ ICC family, those you see and those you don't see, our family, neighbors, coworkers, our government, the church worldwide, our seniors, our youth and young adults lifted in prayer. And for more information, please follow us on Facebook. And you can also visit our website at djicc.org for more information on our beautiful church. Wow, thank you again to Kennedy for the amazing poem and Brianna for going through the announcements during this time of continued quarantine. There are still so many ways in which we can be involved with our church to stay connected and to help the community. Definitely want to encourage everyone uh, to consider taking classes with Maranatha Bible Institute. It was founded by Bishop Everett. Uh, a couple of decades ago, I think maybe three decades ago, um, but some amazing classes and learnings have come from it. And welcome to uh, the new Dean, Minister Betty Burgess, and many thanks to former Dean Iris Apes for your many years of service in the ministry. Now we're transitioning to a very exciting part of our program being facilitated by our youth members, Taylor, Avery, Amaya and Soraya, and this portion is called A Moment in Black History. Hi, my name is Taylor, and today I will be talking about two successful inventors. One received a design patent and one became a millionaire. Today, I will be talking about Madam C.J. Walker and Sarah Boone. Madam C.J. Walker was an inventor in the late 1800s and the early 1900s. She invented Walker's wonderful hair grower, glossine, a pressing oil, and a vegetable shampoo. She ran a successful hair salon business and she was the first black self-made millionaire. She also built a mansion called Villa Luaro. She is definitely an inspiration to me because she broke skin color barriers. Sarah Bone was an inventor in the 19th century who received a design patent for her variation of the ironing board that was made for slimmer, tighter fitting fabrics. She migrated from Craven County, North Carolina to New Haven, Connecticut in 1847. She was able to leave Craven County because of her marriage to James Boone, a free African-American. She made an invention during Reconstruction in the Jim Crow era, during a time when Black people were disrespected and not valued. 
She invented a modern novelty that we use every day, the ironing board. After Madam C.J. Walker started suffering from a scalp disorder causing hair loss, Walker invented her products by getting ingredients from her local drugstore. She then mixed them together in her kitchen. She used precipitated sulfur, copper sulfate, beeswax, petroleum, like petroleum jelly, coconut oil, and a violet extract perfume to hide the smell of sulfur. As business grew, she opened the manufacturing school, a manufacturing company in a beauty school. When she moved her business to Indianapolis, she had made today's equivalent of seven of several millions of dollars. In 1918 at Irvington on Hudson, Madame CJ built an Italianate mansion she named Villa Luaro, designed by Vertiner Tandy, a talented black architect. Villa Luaro was the assembly place for many leaders of the Harlem Renaissance. She's an inspiration to me because she started her own business in a time where Black women were disrespected and women were expected to marry, stay home, and be a housewife, not run a successful business and make millions of dollars. She has perseverance, ambition, intelligence, and independence. These are the characteristics I want to see myself using every day. She inspired many young Black girls to start their own business and make them feel like they belong in the entrepreneurial world and that they can do it too. Sarah Bone was born into slavery in 1832 and earned her freedom in 1847 by marrying James Boone the same year. The couple went on to have eight children. Using a network in the Underground Railroad, she escaped in 1847 to New Haven, Connecticut. When they, when they arrived, Sarah found the job as a dressmaker, while James found the job as a bricklayer. Coming from a place where Black people were forbidden to learn how to read and write, she learned. It was in New Haven while working, Sarah came up with her new invention. Sarah came up with a new design of an ironing board that made for slimmer, tighter fitting fabrics in the corsets of that era. For one thing, it made her job much easier. She applied to a patent in 1891 and received a design patent in 1892, making her one of the first Black female inventors to receive the highest honor to, invent to inventors, the patent. Sarah's an inspiration to me because like Madam C.J. Walker, she wrote color and gender barriers. A former slave became a professional inventor during Reconstruction in the Jim Crow era. Both she and Madam C.J. Walker are huge inspirations to me, and they should be to you as well. Good morning, my name is Avery, and my Black history legend is Douglas Lee Miller. Douglas Lee Miller was born in Johnstown, Pennsylvania on New Year's Eve, 1949. In his later years of life, he attended the University of Akron, where he studied with singer-songwriter Matty Moss Clark, who helped develop his baritone vocals. This Grammy, this Grammy nominated gospel artists wrote and recorded some of the most beloved gospel songs, including When I See Jesus Do Not Pass Me By, Unspeakable Joy, and My Soul Has Been Anchored. In the Lord, One of the Deliverance, Jesus is Coming, favorite songs sung by our very own Sister Pat Lofton. Douglas Miller passed away on February 5th, 2021. His, mu his musical legacy will continue to reach classrooms, choirs, orchestra pits, and band rooms across the world. Today, we recognize and respectfully celebrate the life of Douglas Lee Miller. May you rest in peace. Thank you.
Good morning, I'm Amaya, and today I am going to be talking about Cicely Tyson. Miss Tyson was Miss Tyson was born in New York, where she also grew up in East Harlem, New York. When she was about 18 years old, Cicely began modeling from there. She was drawn into acting. Although she never went to any movies as a child, as Cicely began to get into the acting career, her religious mother did not approve. She felt as if Cicely was choosing a very sinful path, so she kicked her out of their home. Okay. Oh God. Cicely Tyson was an award-winning television actress and model. She is best known for her roles in the autobiography of Miss Jane Pittman, The Help, and The Trip to Bountiful, among others. Despite Cicely's mother not approving in her acting career at a young age, she still managed to be a successful actress. She appeared in on-stage movies and television. In 1963, Cicely Tyson became the first African-American to star on the series East Side, West Side. She also portrayed notable roles on television, including Kunta Kinte's mother in the adaption Haley, Alex Haley's Roots, and a title role in the autobiography of Miss Jane Pittman which earned Tyson two Emmy Awards in 1974. Moving to Broadway, 1983, Tyson was the lead in The Corn is Green, a place set in Welsh mining town in 1994. She received her third Emmy in her supporting role as housemaid Constalia in CBS's ministry television adaption of the oldest living Confederate widow tales. More recently, Tyson appeared in The Help in 2011 as May Constantine Bates, which she received many awards for her being part of an assembled cast and also worked on several Tyler Perry movies. And after a 30 year absence from Broadway, Tyson returned with the role in Horton's Foot, The Trip to Bonnefield. The actress traveled to Texas in an effort to better understand her part in the acclaimed production. Dedication that paid off when her performance won Tyson the 2013 Tony Award for her best performance by an actress in a leading role in a play. In 2017, Tyson appeared in director Richard Linklater's film Last Flag Flying, an adaption from the 2005 novel of the same name. Cicely was married to Miles Davis in the 80s for seven years and had no children. Cicely also dated Kenneth Franklin in her teen years, which she reveals in her book, Just As I Am, published just two days before she passed. She gave birth to her daughter, Joan, at 17 years old. In this memoir, she also talks about how her daughter stays out of the spotlight. Tyson received numerous acting awards and nominations and became a member of the Black Filmmakers Hall of Fame in 1977. She, was, she has also been honored by the Congress of Racial Equality and by the National Council of Negro Women. And in 2010, the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People presented Tyson with its 95 Spring Arn Medal an award given to African-Americans who have reached outstanding levels of achievement. In January 28, 2021, our Hollywood icon was called to be an angel of God. In a, in a career that lasted more than six decades, Tyson shadowed stereotypes with her portrayal of strong Black women. Tyson starred in acclaimed productions such as Roots, Sounder, and Autobiography of Miss Jane P. Pittman. May she rest in peace. Good morning. My name is Soraya Clemens, and my Black History legend is Vanessa Everett. 
Overseer Pastor Vanessa Everett was born and raised in Newark, New Jersey. She attended Newark Public Schools and received her formal education at Essex County College, Rutgers University, Deliverance Bible Institute, and graduated the United Christian Bible College with a certificate in counseling, Bachelor of Theology, and Master of Religious Education. She is a certified mediator and life coach and is also a certified notary signing agent. She accepted the Lord as her child under the ministry she accepted the Lord as a child under the ministry of the late Apostle Arturo Skinner, where she grew to love and serve the Lord. She was an active, she was active in the youth department of the Deliverance Ministry. She ushered, sang in the choir, and was appointed as one of the prayer leaders of the youth department. For the last 43 years, she has served in the ministry with her husband, the late Bishop James H. Everett II, at the Deliverance Jesus is Coming Church and Association. She was ordained as an elder slash pastor in 1995 and as overseer in 2018. The heartbeat of her ministry at Jesus is Coming has been serving as an administrator of the church in their Christian day school, Maranatha Christian Academy from 1979 to 1991. She has conducted workshops and seminars offering counseling to unwed mothers, married couples and singles. In addition, she continues to minister the gospel as she now serves as senior pastor and overseer of the church. Overseer Vanessa Everett was a devoted wife to Bishop, a Bishop Everett for 47 years and is the mother to one daughter, Solange, and the grandmother of James Xavier, Aja Dale, and Samaya Sky. Today we celebrate you, our Black History legend, Overseer Pastor Vanessa Everett. Thank you. Wow, what an amazing collection of Black history moments. Thank you so much to all of our uh, participant speakers for sharing the history of Madam C.J. Walker, Sarah Boone, Douglas Lee Miller. I wasn't aware of his history, so thank you for sharing that. Uh, Cicely Tyson, uh, so many of her great works were listed. If you have not seen A Woman Called Moses about the story of Harriet Tubman and her portrayal, would we'll definitely encourage you to watch that with your parents and families. And then finally, last but certainly not least, our overseer, Vanessa Everett, uh, as a former uh, student of Maranatha Christian Academy and just coming up through the church, she has definitely been an inspiration and is a legend in Black history. Moving on to the final part of our program for today, we have our guest speakers coming up Soon, brothers, uh, brother Corey and his wife, sister Joanne Gibbons. But just before that, we have our sermonic selection by sister Melissa Roy Melinda, excuse me, Melinda Royal. Lord, you are good. You've been so good. Lord, you are good. You've been better than good. I can't praise you enough. I owe you my life. I can't thank you enough. Even if I try, oh, you've been so good. Yeah, ain't got to be no. So good, yeah, you've been so good to me. Oh, Lord, you are good. You've been so good. Lord, you are good. You've been better than good. I can't praise you enough. So good, yeah, God, you've been so good, yeah, you've been so good to me. Better than good to me, 
So many doors, so many doors you open, so many ways you made, so many times you healed me better than good to me. So many doors, God, I can't count all the ways, not even every time you've been. God, there are so many times you've been better than good to me, better than good to me, better than good to me. God, you've been better than good to me, yeah, better than good to me. He's been better than good to me, better than good to me, say, better than good to me. He's been better than good to me in so many doors, so many doors you open, so many ways you made, so many times you healed me, better than good to me, so many doors, so many doors you open, so many ways you made, so many times you healed me, better than good to me. Oh, you've been so good, yeah, oh, he's been, oh, so good, I'm thankful, God, you've been, oh, so good to me. Yes, sir, thank you, God, thank you, God. Everybody, I want I want everybody to drop some heart emojis in the chat. Giving God love, giving God love. Amen. Thank you, God. I'm I'm just so glad that we have this opportunity to to share on this morning about love. Amen. First of all, I just want to thank all the young people for what they did. We have some amazing, amazing young people. I thank God for all the black history moments and everything that was educating me too. I mean, some of that stuff I didn't really know, but that was educating me and I thank God for that. So on this morning, we're gonna be talking about love, love language, love language. But before we get started, we just wanna say a quick prayer. God, we thank you for this opportunity, Lord, to come before you in your presence, God, to give a word about love, God, we ask that you just speak through us, God. We, we have things to talk about, but God, we ask Lord, that you just take control. Speak through us, God, give us what you would have us to say, Lord, let, us, let this message be a blessing to everybody that hears, God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Thank you, amen. God, thank you, God. So on this morning, I, I, I found it uh, is, a, is a great pleasure to be able to minister with my wife and everything on this morning, just to give you a word about love, love. And the scripture that we're gonna be reading from is gonna be from 1 Corinthians 13 and 13, the NIV version. And it says, and now these three remain, faith, hope, love, but the greatest of these is love. Amen, the greatest of these is love. Now this, this chapter, the love chapter, they consider, First Corinthians 13, chapter 13, the love chapter. And basically in this chapter, Paul, Apostle Paul is speaking to the church of Corinth, right? Now about what he explained previously in chapter 12, basically how God gives spiritual gifts to different people, right? God gives us spiritual gifts. But in those days that the church of the Corinthians, they were, I guess they were putting too much emphasis on the spiritual gift that God bestowed, bestowed upon them and not enough love in their hearts. So in chapter 13, Paul says, listen, I don't care how many spiritual gifts you have, right? In modern time, you can be able to sing people under the pews. You could be able to preach people under the pews and play or whatever, whatever your spiritual gift is. You, should, you could be able to do that, but if you don't have love in your heart, Paul says it's as a, a sounding brass or, or a tinkling cymbal, meaning that it means nothing. It's just nothing. So you have to have love in your heart. He even, if you go down further in a chapter, 
he even compares love to two important virtues, faith and hope. What is faith? Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So faith, God says, it says in a word that is impossible to please God without faith. Faith is essential to your Christian walk. You can't have a right relationship with God without faith, right? Hope, what is hope? Hope is that assurance that God is a promise keeper. Whatever he said he's gonna do, he's gonna keep it. So we have that assurance. So if you have hope and, and faith, these, these things are essential to Christianity. Without that, without hope and faith, Christianity doesn't even really make sense. It's meaningless. So you have to have hope and faith. And still with that, Paul still says, love is greater. Mm -hmm. Out of these three things, love is greater. Because why? Because after you realize faith is, like I said, is the substance of things hoped for, <clears throat> the evidence of things not seen. So once you realize faith, you get what you're faithing in, what you're believing God for, now you received it, right? You don't have any more faith because you already received it. And the hope, after the hope is realized, you got what you want. You don't have any more faith and hope, but you still need love, right? We all still need love. So the greatest of these is love, right? So the people of Corinth, they, they, they start to become self-centered because we have to admit sometimes as human beings, sometimes we're prone to take credit for God's blessings, right? So we have to have love in what we do. So some years ago, um, I, I gotta be totally honest, when, when I heard about love languages, I really didn't know what love languages were, were, was about. You know, I, I was like, what? My, my wife introduced me to a book written by uh, Dr. Gary Chapman uh, around 1992. He, he wrote this book in 1992. And basically he entails five main ways where a person can have a heartfelt connection with their loved one. Believe it or not, eight, each and every one of us has a specific love language. We all crave love, right? We all need to be loved, but we experience it in different ways. So we, my wife, we, we had a, the opportunity through this book to take a test on, on, on what, what love, what our specific love language is. My wife's love language is, what is it? Acts of service. Acts of service. And my particular love language is quality time. Mm -hmm. So acts of service, you know, like that's, that's, that, that means like, you know, she, she likes for, for example, for, for me to be able to wash the car. This, this is a one quick example. We had, we used to have a neighbor that lived across the street from us that he used to, every Saturday, he'd be out there washing his car and washing his car. And my wife would, wow, that's, man, that's wonderful how he does that. And so she's giving me subtle hints, you know, to wash the car, but that's just, it just wasn't my thing. I'd rather take it to the car wash, you know, but that wasn't good enough, but she wants me to go out there and hand wash it. And, you know, so that's an act of service, something that is her specific love language. Mine's is quality time. You know, I, I like spending quality time and everything. So we have to learn each other's acts of service. The main, the five main um, love languages are receiving gifts, quality time, words of affirmation, acts of service, and physical touch. And my wife, she's going to go through like some of the, um, the, the, basically all the specific love languages, and we're going to correlate it to how we can recognize God's love language. Amen. Yes. So as Corey mentioned, my primary love language is acts of service. Now, I really didn't say that he had to wash the car yeah, by yeah. hand, yeah, yeah. but it would be nice to have a nice shiny car when I come out. Um, but that's just it. You know, my, my love language, my primary love language is acts of service. So anything that he would do, the small things I would appreciate. And God is the same way for us. Yes, yes. You know, he considers our desires. He considers our needs and he counts it not robbery to be a blessing to us because he loves us. Now, in 1 John 4 and 8, it reads, 
He who does not love does not know God, for mm -hmm. God is love. God is love. And the Bible speaks of his love languages and how he displayed them. How many know that the Bible is the most purest and the clearest revelation yes, yes. of who and what love really is? It tells us of God's love story. It shares how God shared his love for us. It shares how God shared his love for us and how so many stories, there were so many scenarios in the Bible where God exemplified his love for the people. Mm -hmm. They are similar to those found in the book that my husband just shared with you, The Five Love Languages, The Secret to Love That Lasts, which was written by Gary Chapman. And the premise of this book is that problems arise when one person's love language, what really matters to them, when one person's love language doesn't match up with another person. Yeah. But did you know that relationships flourish when you communicate with someone using their primary love language. Mm, yeah. So let's explore. Let's take the time to explore God's love languages. Now, Corey mentioned that the love languages are acts of service, which is God's works, his works. Words of affirmation, which is his word and his promises to us the gift of giving, which is his grace and his mercy. The physical touch, which are hugs. How many know that we get hugs and we get kisses from God every day? Mm -hmm. Just to wake up in the morning is a hug and a kiss from God because he counted not robbery to say, I'm gonna allow you one more day, whether it's to get it right, yes, yes, yes. whether it's to walk right or talk right, or to love your neighbor mm -hmm. as Christ loves us. Right. And quality time, which is his, his presence. Matthew 20, 28 says, just as the son of man did not come to be served, but to serve, he came to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. That was such a great act of service. Jesus would go to the cross and die and give his life for you and for me. His whole life and his ministry was dedicated to service. He had more instances, in my opinion, there were more instances of his service and his acts of service than him having sermons. He never hesitated to reach out to the real needs of the people he encountered. And acting in compassionate service allowed him, just like it should allow us, mm. to effortlessly introduce people to a life without sin and the joys of salvation. I'm so glad that the Lord saved me. Yes, yes. That was one of our favorite songs for our late Bishop James A. Shepherd. How many of you were glad that the Lord saved you? So here are a few examples of acts of service. God's works. Hmm. How many know that he walked on the water? Jesus walked on the water. Matthew 14, 22 to 20, 23. He confronted demons. He casted demons out, Matthew 8 and 16. He worked the works of his father who sent him, John 9 and 4. And you know what? He suffered. He was humili humiliated and he experienced agony mm. just for you and for me. Philippians 2, 5 through 8. Now the second of the love languages is words of affirmation. His words and his promises are true. By his word, God brought the world into being. Mm. Genesis one and one. His words of love are recorded in scripture and shall never pass away. Matthew 24 and 35. His words are also written on our hearts. Romans two and 15. God's word in his promise, he will never, he will not lie 
and his words are true. How many know back in the day, I don't know if the young people today use this term, they probably don't because they call us old folks. But back in the day, we used to use the term, word is bond. Mm. How many know that God's word is bond? That means it is true. It's everlasting. It's not a lie. It will stand forever because he is a truthful God. Mm -hmm. And what he promises to us, he will provide. So I'm going to rest on his promises and claim the affirmations he has planted in his word. Will you? I am the head and not the tail. Not the tail. I am above and not believe, beneath. Deuteronomy 23, 28 and 13. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Jeremiah 29. How many are happy about that? That God promises that we will su succeed in life. Mm. He's not here to harm us because he loves us. Yes, yes. Love is the greatest gift. What is our affirmation to God? Psalms 119 and 164. Seven times a day do I praise thee because of thy righteous judgment. And my favorite is Psalms 34. I will bless, bless the Lord, the Lord yes, yes. at all times and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Words of affirmation. Gift of giving, God's grace. Grace is denied as a, de defined as a gift and God's gifts of grace are innumerable. They can't be counted. There's so many. Yes, yes. We did not earn it and we definitely did not deserve it. God is generous to us. His mercies are new every morning. When you wake up in the morning, that's a mercy. Thank God God Thank has God. allowed us to wake up just to breathe and see another day. Thank and God. we are thankful. All he wants us to do is trust him and receive the gift which he desires to give us. The gift of Jesus, John 3, 16, John 4 and 10. The gift of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. Mm. Acts 18, Acts 8, verses 18 through 20. The gift of his love, security, and his comfort. 2 Timothy 1 and 7. Yes. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but he's given us a spirit of love, of power, and of a sound, sound mind. mind. Physical touch. Yes, yes. Physical yes. touch. Give the example of a mother's love for her child. And when they are hurting, how love can make all things better. Yes. Just like me, I have a son. When he's crying or he's sad, I'm a mother. I feel that and I know it. And I want to, com I want to comfort him. I want to give him a hug. I want to give him a kiss to make him feel better. That's what God wants for us. This is what Jesus does for his children. He gives comfort when we need it. He gives it in a time of trials. He gives it in time of trouble, pain, suffering, joy, peace, and celebration. Mm -hmm. These are all divine hugs from our Lord and Savior, Jesus mm -hmm. Christ. And how about the last one? The last one, which is quality time, which is my husband's yes. primary love language, quality time. How does God spend time with you? How does he send his presence? How do we know that we're in his presence? Romans 38 and 39 says, I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us yes, from yes. the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. That means that his presence is forever near. He's always there. Mm -hmm. He said that he would never leave us. He said that he would never forsake yes, us. Yes, yes. And we are thankful that God would show us his love in so many ways, so many ways. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, God, we, we may have our specific 
love languages for, for, for our partner or for different people, but God is the creator of all things. So God speaks to all of our specific love languages. He speaks to everything. So if he is the creator of everything, don't you think God has a specific love language? I would consider God's love language to be people because God commands us to love one another, right? right. In John 15 and 12, Jesus, the, the, the King James verses, Jesus tells his disciples, this is my commandment that ye love one another, even as I have loved you. Right. John 15 and 17 says these things I command you that ye may love one another. So I think it's very self-explanatory. God wants us to love. It's, he mentions love about 310 times in the King James um, Bible. God wants us to love. And back to the book, um, The Five Love Languages, Dr. Gary Chap Chapman gives a wonderful scenario of, of, of how a person is not speaking their, their, their spouse's particular love language. He gives a, a great a scenario. Imagine two people in two separate rooms, right? And in each, each room, each person is fighting. They're fighting to get their own way, fighting to get their own way. And they're not even connecting with the other person in the other room, mm -hmm. right? What, what generates from this? What leads to this? Anger? bitterness, right? Disconnection, stubbornness, and eventually it leads to a dead love, a dead relationship. Mm -hmm. But but you have to what what you have to notice is both individuals thought that their room was the right room to be in. So they didn't move. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Why? Because they was too focused on yes. themselves. Yes. So we have to learn how to, to see me loving my wife and, and, and catering to her and speaking her love language and, 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 and making sure that it's not about all of my wants and needs is a reflection of my love for Christ. So it goes intertwined is agape love, is unconditional love, mm -hmm. right? So this, 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 this the, speaking your spouse's love language, and this is for the youth too, coming up with their relationships and everything, you have to learn how to speak different people's love language. Mm -hmm. and, and, and what it does is for a spouse, right? It, it, it shows you, it puts them, it shows you their light, right? It shows you their light and not the light that you want to illuminate on them, mm -hmm. but it puts them in their own light. So you're respecting them and you show, you, you reverence, you're reverencing God and having respect for God at the same time. Mm -hmm. Amen. So as, as, as Christians, you know, we have to learn to put in the hard works, but if we if we put the hard work in, without the heart work, right, mm -hmm. it means nothing. Paul, I mean Isaiah says in a word, our, our our righteousness is as a filthy rags, right? Mm -hmm. So we have to learn how to put in the hard work, and the heart work. Amen. Right. right. So I, I I pray you know you have any more? Baby? I I pray that this message was a was a blessing to everybody. You know about recognizing God's love, speaking right. God's language, mm -hmm. speaking your spouse's language, mm -hmm. you know, connecting with them, connecting with the heart. Because if, if you have all these gifts mm -hmm. with no love in your heart, it means nothing. And we're speaking about our marriage. We're speaking about us, but this is relative to any relationship. Yes, yes. It's relative to young people, you and your friends. It's relative to you and your parents, parents to your children. It's relative to your work relationships. I'm a manager, so I have a team of a number of people, diverse individuals. And as a manager, I have to understand each and every one of their needs so that I can relate to yes, them. Yes. They all do not expect the same thing. They all have to be related to differently because they have different needs. And that is how you have to do in relationships. And that is what God does for us. He understands everything about us. He understands the fabric of our beings. He created us. Yes, so yes. he knows who we are. And that's why he wants us to understand him 
so that we can love like he yes, loves. Yes, yes, yes. Even in those challenging situations when you're going through certain things with individuals, you got to see it. A lot of times I'll say, what would Jesus do? Mm. A lot of times I'll say, God, what would you say? What would you say? How would you act? How would you relate? I want to do it your way. And while I don't always do it his way, I'm always striving to be who it is that he calls for me to be. Mm. And he wants us to be that way. That is how acts of service, when I talked about it a little earlier, he said that with acts of service, Jesus was good at it. He performed so many services yes. to the point that it helped him be able to lead people to a life of salvation yes, ultimate and the joy of salvation. Yes. He made the ultimate sacrifice. That sacrifice was when he went to the cross and he died for you and me. Now, I would die for my children. I would die for my spouse. I'll die for my family. But would I and die? Would I die for the universe? Would I consider dying for everyone in the world? Mm, wow. God considered us all. Wow, wow. He counted it not robbery to consider the love that he had for each and every mm. one of you, yes. including myself and Corey. Yes. So on, on today, as we close, we want to, we, we, we don't want to end this out without offering Jesus Christ to someone so you can experience that love, that same agape love that we have. So if there's anyone that's listening on today that doesn't have Christ in their life, it's so simple. It's not like a whole drawn out thing that you have to go through. All you have to do is just repeat these words after me. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you. I love you. God, I ask that you come into my heart. Heart. I repent, forgive me for every unforgiven sin in my life. Lord Jesus, I realize that you are Jesus Christ, the Lord, and you died on the cross for my sin and is alive today. And God, I confess it with my mouth that you are Jesus Christ. And God, I accept you into my life on today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And it's just that simple, y'all. You're saved. All right. Congratulations. I thank God for each and every one of you. And for this time just to share about specific love languages and, and love, the love of Christ in our lives. Amen. 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 Thank and you, God. And we choose love. We choose. You can't see it, but we choose love. Amen. God so we, bless you. We're going to turn this service back into Over the hands of uh, Overseer. Ob Overseer Vanessa Everett. God bless you and thank you both brother Corey and sister Joanne for that awesome, awesome sharing on the love languages on today. My goodness, uh, it could not have been shared in any greater way, though that may be a lesson that is taught to uh, two people in love uh, progressing in their relationship. It is a message that covers all of us, the young people, the old people, the in-between, it just covers every facet of life because God so loved, God so loved that he gave. And as I was uh, listening to the message, so many thoughts came to mind, which I am not preaching today because they just did an awesome job of doing it. But they mentioned that love, and when they were talking about love and these five qualities, these five points, these things that lead to love, the thought came to mind, love makes you act a certain way. I, I hear people when they are talking or communicating one with another, they'll say, oh, you're going to act like that. And if we have God living on the inside, and if we've learned to love the Lord with all of our heart, soul, mind, and, and strength, then we're going to act like God wants us to act as a, a representative of his all. Oh, the, the word is good and there's not much more that I can add to it at this time. But I want to tell you young people, all of you that have participated in this service today, especially the young people that gave themselves to uh, uh, sharing in their gifts and talents and, and just did what they did 
it's it's learning it's teaching them how to do it out of love for god uh we don't need to sit back and find uh points of criticism love them as they love and are learning to love that's what it's all about on today so we received the blessing that came through our youth department on this morning thank you our worship leader sister kamari and all of those all, listen i don't want to get in trouble calling names they've been put up on the chat but that gave read the scripture prayed uh, uh, uh did the announcements everything that you did i believe it was a portion of you giving back to god in love you didn't say no you just came forth and did it and we're grateful for that thank you for those who work behind this thing the, the scenes listen and as we learn to love I, I want to share a little incident that happened, two little things that happened on last night. Uh, I was out doing my little running around and at the end of the evening when I came in, there was something that I forgot to pick up because I had to go do, go do something else as a pastor and, and run an errand. So I was trying to remind myself, after you do this, make sure you go and take care of this, you've got to go. And I missed it and came all the way home. Well, I had to go back out. And first of all, as I was pulling out of my driveway, uh, there was an obstacle. There was another car that was parked in an awkward position on the street. And as I'm usually able to pull out in my regular fashion, I look both ways. I did all of that, but I did not see the, the, the car. I saw it as I walked to the car, but for some reason I, I missed seeing it. And as I was pulling out, just in the nick of time, I was able to see because even the signal on my car didn't help me to realize that that other car was behind me. I stopped. And as I stopped and then was able to continue, thank God I didn't hit the car. I drove down the street, not looking at my own abilities to stop because on my own, I might be thinking about the dents that are in that individual's car on this morning, but God was good. And so I thanked him. I thanked him for that. Somebody else might have been just walking around saying, Shh, I didn't. But God, I had to recognize the goodness of the Lord there. And then as I went a few blocks down and turned the corner, it had begun to uh, uh, become nighttime. So I, I could see the scenery as I was coming down out of the mountain. And there's a particular road that I take that allows me to look over into New York as I'm driving. And as I was looking at the scenery, I could see the clear moon sitting up in the sky, so beautiful. And when you love the creator, when you love, you don't take advantage of, it's just there. You've got to acknowledge the one that loves so much. And I began, as I was riding down that road, I was thanking him for not having the accident. And then when I looked at his creation, it created another uh, 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 thought. It brought me to another place where I was now saying, thank you, Lord for your beautiful creation. Thank you for the moon so beautifully in the sky with the reflection of the sun. We see it as nighttime. We see it as a dark place, but God, you put a, a reflection of your sun, the light on the moon. And I begin to just continue my drive thinking on the goodness of Jesus. And a song came to mind who set the sun a blazing in the sky who lit the moon and the stars on high. He's passing out. He's giving his blessings to one and all. Oh yeah, God, he did it all. And so as you develop your relationship, young people with God, we talk about what we could do in these five points that they gave. But if you learn to love him, you'll remember him in everything that's going on in your life. You might be uh, hesitant because you say being a Christian requires so much. It just requires you loving him. And in loving him, you'll learn to serve him. As I looked at the scriptures on creation and what God did, it talks about the fact that God blessed us in Genesis 1 and 29. It says, then God said, I give you every seed bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it, they will be yours for food. For food. And, and God is here communicating all the things he did. But guess what? He gave it to man to pursue life. He gave it to man and he said, you've got, you've got control over this. Uh, uh, you have dominion. And he gave him the responsibility. 
So it's our responsibility as God has given to us in love for us to give back in love. And it's only done as we create a relationship, develop a relationship of love with him. And so now and I thank God for every one of you that have taken time to join us, whether it be through Zoom this morning, or if you're on Facebook Live and you've heard the message of love, the five languages of love this morning, we thank God that you will receive that and grow from it. Learn to love, learn to give, learn to communicate, learn to do things, acts of love, and all of this to the glory of God. He deserves it. He, re he deserves that we respond back to him in that fashion. Our goal is to teach you to love the Lord with all your heart. Love the Lord with all your soul, with all your might. Give God your everything. And guess what? He loves you so much. He's going to give back to you. He's going to give back to you in the blessings of life. He's going to supply your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. He's going to take care of your emotional, your spiritual needs. Remember, it talks about giving you quality time. God gives you quality time. And that quality time comes to us through his love and patience and through the word of God. God blesses us as with gift giving, as, as, as Sister Joanne shared. He blesses us through the words of affirmation. He wants to let you know you're his child. And all oh, that's something special. We connect to people. We look to be connected to somebody that's important. Well, God being your connection, that's the most important connection you could ever have when you can tell somebody, I'm God's child. I know how it is in deliverance and in, in all of the fellowshipping churches where they used to love to say, Bishop Everett's my dad, Bishop Everett, and they, they would fight for position in being a child of Bishop Everett, spiritual children of Bishop Everett. Well, just think about it, take it one step higher. I'm God's child. God loves me so much that he gave so many different ways. Remember, remember the love languages. Remember those things that he sold into us and that he is continually doing for us and keeping us in this day and time. People of the world, people on Zoom, people on Facebook, listen, be encouraged today because God loves you and so do I. And there's nothing you can do about it. We encourage you to stay in touch with us. Uh, we have the uh, spot on Zoom and also on Facebook that you can click on and say that you shared in this service on today, you're a visitor. This might be your first time. It might be that you've been here before. Let us know that you've joined us for the service today and you want to stay in touch with things that are going on around in, in our ministry. We'll get it back to you. We'll let you know what's going on. Uh, join us on Tuesday for our Bible study as we go through the series of discipling and uh, the journey. We're on a journey, guys. We're on a journey to learn more about God and how we as his disciples must first be before we can disciple somebody else. We can't tell them what to do if we're not doing it ourselves. So we're going through the first process of the journey, learning uh, what our lives should be, how they should be connected to God. We're examining ourselves and developing. Some of you say, this is elementary, Watson. Yes, but elementary it is. Some of us missed some things in elementary school. And as we matured, we learned how those things connected and were beneficial to our life. So join us on the journey. Uh, the book for this particular series is not available as a hard copy, but if you're able, you can go online to Faith and uh, Faith uh, Life, Lifeway and, and get the book in the e-form, e e-book and join us for the studies. Uh, we invite you to join us for other worship services. Check it out on Facebook and see what's going on. Uh, you can also plan to be with us on next Sunday morning, the first Sunday of March, as we march through and continue our journey, worshiping and serving the Lord. God deserves our time. God deserves us to worship him and praise him for all that he's done for us. I love you all, everyone that I see on here with all of the, the different emojis and all of the text messages and things that you've sent. I'm praying for you. I'm praying for your victories in Christ Jesus. I'm praying that you will stay strong. Love him every day. Serve him because you love him. Give of yourself to your fellow man. Expl explain the word of God as much as possible. 
write down scriptures and share them with somebody if you haven't learned them for rote yet. If you can't memorize them and say them without using the Bible, don't be ashamed of God. Open the scripture and say, look, this is what he said to me, how much he loved us and share it with somebody. God loves you again. And so do I. And there's nothing you can do about it. God bless and goodbye. Right on, Casey.